welcome Rick Riley. Hi. How are you? Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for uh, not knowing I was coming, but here I am. <laughs> uh, Steve, uh, Steve's an old friend. He looks young, doesn't he? Doesn't he look so young? He looks so young, Mark Foley sent him an email yesterday. That was kind of weird. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I am. I'm Rick Riley. I'm a sports writer. I, I've covered uh, all over the place. I used to cover Gokul playing ping pong. Where's Gokul? I haven't seen him forever. Where is he? Back there. I don't know if you know this, he's the only ping pong player uh, ever had, uh, was on steroids. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, he still says he's nationally ranked. Is that, is it world ranked or nationally ranked? World ranked, oh. I'm gonna go back there and check that out, I don't know. Oh, that's cool. Well, welcome to Phoenix, this is very cool. Thank you for inviting me. Phoenix is uh, very excited. Uh, they're gonna get pro football soon, and they're very excited. <laughs> Very excited about that. The Bidwells, you know, are the, are the worst owners in sports. I hope none of them are here today. But uh, the, the Bidwells are to pro sports ownership what Velveeta is to the great chefs of Europe. You know what I mean? <laughs> they just suck every way you can suck, you know? About why I'm here, let's talk about why we're all here. Let's help each other, you know? So I was saying this to my son. I said, you know, everybody's looking for a way to heaven. Maybe the way is heaven, you know? And I started writing different kind of columns, like, I wrote about these, these, have you ever heard of these guys, the Hoyts? This guy, Dick Hoyt, was a 40-year-old man who was 50 pounds overweight. He had a cerebral palsy son, couldn't understand a word the kid said, until 18 years old, this scientist discovered this way to let him talk through a mouth thing and a computer, and the first thing the kid said is, let's go for a run. <laughs> and so the, the dad got a wheelchair and tried to run, and about had a heart attack, but pretty soon he learned to do it, built his own wheelchairs, Pretty soon they're entering marathons, triathlons. The Hoyts have now entered and completed over 250 marathons, 100 triathlons, and eight Hawaiian ultra, uh, uh, what are they called, Ironman triathlons. And not only that, so for the swimming part, he's, he's towing him on a dinghy. He's, and he's riding him on the shoulder, uh, on the uh, armrests of his, of his bicycle on this glass chair, and he pushes him in this thing, and he's passing people. You know what I mean? You're 25 years old and you just got passed by two people. So I wrote about this, this foundation I decided to start called Nothing But Nets. You go to nothingbutnets.net, 3,000 kids a day die in Africa simply because they don't have a net over their beds. You don't have to topple a government or come up with a cure, nothing. They're just dying because these mosquitoes come out from midnight till four, and until you're six years old, you really can't survive it. 10 bucks puts a net over these kids' beds, I wrote about it, we're up to $5.5 .5 million, and next Tuesday night on American Idol, uh, every vote you send in, please don't vote for Sanjaya, but if you do, <laughs> if every vote is gonna be back, is gonna be worth 10 cents, uh, all these big corporations are donating, they think they're gonna get 60 to 80 million votes, and about 20% is gonna go to nothing but nets, so. Focus well, I mean, I love this tournament, maybe because it is so hard, right. it's just, so full of suffering. Uh, but it's more than that. I think the reason I love it the most is because it's so American. The U.S. Open is my favorite major because the U.S. Open reflects us. It is us. Like us, it's big, yet you need only be big of heart to win it. Like us, it's not especially pretty, and, and nobody hands you a spiffy jacket when you win it. But if you can, you wear its glory all your days. And like us, it teases kings and lionizes cobblers. What it is, is our national championship, and God knows we love those. Like all our other national championships, it's woven of catastrophes. Oh, we hit it twice. And comebacks. It's become a kind of national golf holiday, really, often given to fathers on Father's Day even when fathers are noticeably absent. But the greatest thing about the U.S. Open is that it truly is open. Even if that means hordes can come to our shores and steal it from us. It doesn't matter. 
it's still the worthiest pursuit in golf. About cheerleading isn't a sport. Get it off my ESPN set. What are mm -hmm. you doing? You don't wear a tight sweater and a circle skirt and go 2468. Well, I got tons and tons of hate mail. But cheerleaders really don't know, know how to hate. Mm -hmm. So they're like, I hope you die a little hard over the eye. <laughs> <laughs> you know, thumbs and pastels. You know. <laughs> little picture of the squad. <laughs> like, golfers, you know, are really boring quotes, but the caddies are always great. They're characters. They're great. So you, so you say to Phil Mickelson, how'd you hit the driver? Oh, I was hitting it very long today. All right. Then you go to his caddy, say, how was he hitting it? Dude, we were eating hot titanium, you know. <laughs> Our toast had heat on it, you know. So I well, they, go, they I have go to the caddies. Their own vernacular, they have their own jargon. The oh, yeah. Guys. Like, the cat, you ask the caddy, where's that ball? He says, if that was wrapped in bacon, Lassie wouldn't find it. <laughs> well, it's a bestseller already. It is a bestseller, and if it's not, I just take, I go to those Barnes and Nobles and just stick it in the bestseller rack, you know, just, <laughs> number two, you know, there it is.